Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you, this time talking about episode 22 of season 5 of Arrow Missing. And uh, all in all, I thought this was a, a pretty solid episode. Very nice setup for our season finale next episode. Uh, let's get right into it. So, uh, the flashback stuff, I mean, that was reasonably well done. I did enjoy it, and it's certainly cool to get to see Yao Fei again. You got to see all these little nods to all the stuff that's happened to Oliver in the five years since he got stuck on the island and before and all that. And um, it's definitely, you know, some nice stuff from Dolph Lundgren here, just basically kind of saying, like, oh, dude, I am so going to mess you up. Um, the only problem, of course, here is that he injects Oliver with this drug. It's basically going to drive him to kill himself and gives him a gun in order to commit suicide. And then he just wanders off. Like, you know, he's going off to, like, have a sandwich or something. Like, you know, dude, maybe you should just sort of hang around to make sure your plan goes okay. I mean, granted, he does have a gun with one bullet in it and he wants to kill you, but, you know, you know that his mind is horribly messed up on drugs, you know, just sort of stand a little bit off to the side where he can't really get a good, a good angle at you, or, you know, yeah, and, and you'll be fine, and you'll be sure that Oliver dies. But of course, he doesn't, and that's dumb. Um, let's see. On the other hand, this does sort of explain why, in episode one, when Oliver gets rescued, and after they have him checked out at the hospital once he's back to start, he's still obviously in terrible physical pain. You know, obviously this and whatever happens between him and Kovar in the season finale, it's probably going to be uh, something he's not going to be able to just shrug off in a, in a matter of a couple of hours. So that's, that's a nice touch there. And I also really liked how, you know, we have in the present... Black Siren, but you know, here in this flashback and with this hallucination, Oliver sees the quote unquote real world. And it really is this whole big theme of how the people in our lives, they are what would give our lives meaning, even if sometimes our presence in their lives can cause them problems. And you know, it's really interesting that, <laughs> and pretty hilarious that. It's Malcolm Merlin that really kind of has to point this out to Oliver. He even points this, like, Oliver, I'm a sociopath, and I have to point this out to you? I mean, this, once again, really drives home that, you know, Malcolm's one redeeming feature as a human being is that he really does love Thea. But other than that, he's a complete and total bastard. And we get to see plenty of that. I mean, Oliver has obviously not forgotten that, uh, you know, Malcolm... <laughs> told Damien Dark about uh, the existence of William, and Malcolm's just like, yeah, my bad, I wasn't thinking clearly, which is just sort of like, are you, are you shitting me? But, you know, they do have to acknowledge it's in some fashion, and they kind of get on with the plot. Um, and, of course, this all leads to um, you know, the bringing Nissa back on the show, which uh, <laughs> pretty hilarious to see these two react to react to each other, I mean, just how much they hate each other, and it reminds us of that rather hilarious line of, uh, from, you know, this, from uh, Legends of Tomorrow about how this yeah, Malcolm had the spear of destiny trapped Nissa in, as you said, like a closeted life in Ohio. It's just sort of like, man, that's that's petty. Um, but yeah, it is interesting, you know, with everybody else taken from his life, Oliver has to form his own little backup team with Malcolm and Nyssa, and then this, of course, leads to him uh, bringing in Slade, of all people. I mean, uh, man, talk about uh, keep your friends close and your enemies closer, or something like that. Um, I mean, this isn't really a huge surprise. I mean, I follow Stephen Amell on Twitter, and, of course, the trailer for the... Uh, Final episode of the season has been up for a while, so you know Manu Bennett coming back as Slade was was no surprise. Um, now there, of course, is a lot of stuff going around that he left the show because he was unhappy with certain things with, uh, uh, with the series. Uh, apparently, that's all gotten ironed out if it was ever even true in the first place. I mean, Manu Bennett's been keeping himself busy over with the Shinar Chronicles and other things. So yeah. 
But nonetheless, I mean, uh, next week we're going to have Talia, Malcolm, Slade, and Oliver versus uh, <clears throat> Prometheus and uh, and uh, Talia Al Ghul. Yeah, that's that's going to be some craziness. Um, I also liked how there was a nice twist here that it turned out that, you know, apparently Rene was kidnapped, and that's why he missed the hearing. Not because he really did genuinely think that his daughter was would be better off in that foster home, or at least that he didn't make that decision. And I think this kind of opens the door to, like, um, I'm saying, like, oh, yeah, he missed that hearing because he was kidnapped, which is a pretty reasonable excuse to have let him have another shot. Um, so speaking of daughters, I did like what they did with uh, Black Siren this episode. You know, before when we'd seen her on the Flash, I mean, she was uh, on the mid around in the mid season. She was just basically pure villain, and beyond villainy, had no real characterization. Here, in her interactions with Quentin, especially when they're alone, and you know, Quentin's, you know, he has gotten through to him and explained about parallel verse and other stuff. And I did like how, you know, of course. His emotional reaction is like, oh, she came back from the dead just like Sarah, which, okay, fair point. And then Thea's all like, uh, no, she's actually from another Earth. And, you know, at first, of course one's initial reaction to this is going to be skepticism, and then Thea's like, you know about metahumans and aliens. Is this really that much harder to wrap your head around? And once he has a minute to process it, yeah, it kind of gets, oh, wow. It was really messed up there. Jeez, I knew Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, once he has a minute to process it, yeah, okay, it dawns on Quentin, like, okay, yeah, this is a Laurel from another world, and she's a bad guy. But the Siren's interactions with him, you know, she's basically she's like, look, I don't want to do this, but I owe, I owe Chase for this. And she seems to genuinely be concerned about him. And this kind of makes you wonder, well, what... What was up with uh, the Quentin on Earth 2? What was he like? I mean, obviously he had to exist because you know, Laurel on that Earth exists. So it would be kind of interesting if maybe on that world, she and Quentin, you know, Black Siren, uh, if the two of them did have a very good relationship, and then if something happened to him, well, maybe that's what pushed her down the path to becoming a bad person. And, you know, here it could be kind of a reverse. Here she's basically seeing another version of her father, whom she might have cared about very deeply. I mean, she knows it's, she would obviously know it's not him, but still, you, you just can't brush something like that off. I mean, think about it, someone that you loved or that you lost, that you found another person, that, someone that was not them, but some version of them from an alternate reality, you, you, that wouldn't be something that you could really just completely brush off as nothing. Now, again, this is all speculation, but the logic of her reactions in this story, plus basically the demands, the logic of storytelling, basically kind of point us in that direction. I mean, of course, there's always the possibility that there's a twist that we haven't thought of somewhere, but... Okay, I'm in case anybody was wondering what I was trying to do with my arm there. It's kind of hot in my arm. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. I mean, that was nicely, nicely done there. Um, also really liked the moments with uh, Felicity and Dig talking about their relationship with Oliver and whether or not what they were doing was a good idea. And then they kind of mentioned Isabel Rochef again and uh, tried to run Talia down with Van, who was Obviously not being played by the same actors, but just some stuff went in order to doubtlessly save money. Uh, and of course it d does not work, and somehow does not kill them, despite that big explosion. And oh, we, we got to see a Cord Industries van. We haven't seen anything from Cord Industries in a bit of a, a, bit of time. a bit of a while, I almost said it. Um, also the stuff uh, at the birthday party, that was good. I mean, they do. I did like that they mentioned Susan Williams, but it's a, they just sort of immediately launch into the whole um, ship tease between Oliver and Felicity again. And it's like, Felicity even brings up shippers, even though she sort of does so in a roundabout way by mentioning soap opera shippers. But again, nice, nicely done there. Um, 
Yeah, Oliver's probably going to owe Lila a pretty serious uh, apology for, you know, what happened here with, uh, uh, with Chase. You know, not to mention all those law enforcement guys that he beat up. I mean, granted, they'll probably just chalk that up to, you know, some other random arrow shooting bad guy that's been running, that's running around the area because, you know, it wasn't just Malcolm. We've had other arrow shooting bad guys. Like, <laughs> remember that one episode, like, in season three where these... There's this big fight between uh, a bunch of like League of Assassins guys, with who are like just like shooting arrows at these people who are like at a cafe. I mean that's that's craziness. That, that, that's weird. Um, let's see what else. What else? What else? Um, actually, yeah, I think that kind of covers everything that I had to say about this episode. Uh, I just really like that what they're doing with these um themes of uh, family. Oh, yeah, family. we got to talk about that. I, I did like that bit where Oliver, you know, confronts Chase, and he's like, man, how could you bring my son into this? Not cool. And Chase is like, you brought my wife into this. And, you know, people have rightfully pointed out, well, yeah. On the other hand, it was um, Chase who chose to murder his wife. Um, and it said, Oliver brought a civilian into an incredibly dangerous situation with someone he knows to be a violent sociopath in the hopes of gaining an edge against violent said violent sociopath. So, yeah, I kind of have to be with Chase on this one. It's sort of like, hey man, you brought the love, you dragged the loved one that I cared about into this first. Somebody who had nothing to do with what's going on with me, just my wife. Your son has nothing to do with this, just your son. Well, you know, turnabout is fair play, dude. I mean, it doesn't make what he's doing any less villainous. But he does raise the point. Oliver tried to use an innocent person who had no business being in a fight between people of this caliber in order to gain a psychological advantage on his enemy. He did this first. I mean, none of this excuses Chase killing his wife or kidnapping William or doing any of this other bad stuff. But Chase is right to point out, it's like, hey man, on this point, we're not that different. And you did this thing first that you're calling me bad for doing. So, I, mean, it, it, I mean, I understand that this is uh, you know, it's a somewhat controversial position, but you know, he does have a point. You you did the same thing to me, only, you know, without the murdering bit. Uh, anyway, I'm going to call it here, guys. As always, please comment, rate, and subscribe. And, of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Hoosier Jedi. Uh, please also join me on Tumblr at Jedi Reviewer. Until next time, take care and have a good one.